guest is Sandeep and welcome uh, to this demo and in this demo we are going to learn that uh, I mean some basic functionalities of the ADF and it is just an introductory uh, demo which I am going to show you so this is JDA basically when you open JDA it looks like this and this is like any other IDE this is IDE uh, that is a development environment uh, like you have Eclipse so in the Eclipse also you create a web projects uh, and do things like that but uh, J in JDEV also we can do uh, those things so this JDEV and ADF are actually a uh, product from Oracle and uh, you can program or you can design ADF application in Eclipse also but the only thing is JDEV provides some more tools uh, and components uh, along with which ADF go goes very well uh, hand to hand so that is why uh, this JDEV is uh, very efficient while working on ADF applications so that's why we use uh, this JDEV now <clears throat> for the installation part of it I can provide you URL or you can go on Google and type in uh, download JDEV ADF and it would be downloaded as a complete package now you don't have to you know download JDEV separately and ADF library separately and then plug in and then download a server and do the plugin with this JDEV once you download uh, this whole package JDEV comes in along with integrated ADF and integrated weblogic uh, server okay so all the servers uh, server and all things are integrated and all things are set up you just have to start and it would look like uh, somewhat like this okay so let's go ahead and <coughs> create some uh, something some applications on it so in ADF you would have application here this is application navigator which shows application and these are the projects under this application so right now this demo app is one of the application which is already open okay now we are going to create a new application because we will start fresh right so you can click here and go to new application you have option of new and open application so click on new application now it's going to ask you the application name so let's say demo app 2 okay uh, we are giving this application name and this is the directory in which this uh, application is going to be stored so let's leave this as default and uh, these are the application templates now since we are going to learn ADF or we are going to work on ADF we are always going to choose this template not, not any other okay. so choose this fusion web application ADF template and click next <coughs> Now, under an application, there would be two projects. Under an ADF application, there would be two projects uh, model and view controller, as I already showed you in one of the applications which was already open, right? So, there would be two projects. So, that is what it is asking here. I mean, here are the project one, you, you are in project one name. So, it's asking that what should, uh, what should be the name of the project one? So, default name is model. You can rename it if you want to, uh, or uh, like demo model or something and this is the directory in which it is going to store let's leave this as default because you know our demo model is uh, going this project is going to be stored in the app in the demo app to which we created so let's leave this as default and these are the technologies available to you and these are selected technologies which are available in this model project okay so in a nutshell we are having project one setting which is a demo uh, which is a model project and its setting says that its name is demo model and the, this is the technologies included in this if you want you can use more technologies click here and shuttle them across but you know these extra things we don't need these default things should be really sufficient for us to uh, start and get going so we'll leave this as default now click next here it says what is the default package this is project one settings so project one is your model project now it is asking that what is the default package uh, i should create for your project one here it is model so let's leave this as default and this is the source bar let's leave this all as default click next now project two comes in project two is the view controller project and if you want you can rename uh, rename it to demo view controller this is the directory leave this as default and these are again the available technologies and these are selected out of these uh, technologies so these are the selected technologies which are going to be available in the view controller you can uh, if you want more technologies you can shuttle again them across but there is no need uh, these technologies already selected by default should be really sufficient for us to design an IDF application now click next and here Java uh, project 2 settings are there project 2 settings uh, that means view controller project settings if this is the default package it is going to create this is the source path and this is output directory so let's leave this as default click finish now it is going to create you 
an application called as demo app 2 which we gave okay and it created demo model project and demo view controller project under two projects this is model this is a view controller so this is basically a model project and this view controller so that the layers of model and views are separated okay and uh, along with this so in a nutshell what we have done we clicked on new application and followed that wizard and most of the options we just changed uh, we just uh, followed the default ones we did not uh, tweak around those uh, settings we just renamed the model project to demo model and view controller to demo view controller you can leave them also default you can simply go on new application and follow all of the default options and create uh, our application so once the application is created your screen would look like this so this is uh, what demo to overview is that it will guide you through the process to plan your application connect to database and things like that but we are not going to use because i already know adf and i'm going to guide you through that process so let's close this and close this and now this is the demo model right if you expand this nothing is there inside this but if you expand view controller there is already a structure given to you uh, by adf now even in Eclipse, when you create demo, uh, when you create a, a web project, there is uh, some structure already given to you. Similarly, here also some structure is given to you. Now there are these uh, some files which ADF refers to while uh, it is running the application, and we'll understand them slowly and slowly as we go down the line. But uh, uh, you know, but for now, uh, this uh, should be sufficient. I mean, uh, we'll go along with the demo. So now. <coughs> Uh, our use case is first we'll design one page and try and then we'll try to implement some functionalities into it to build a navigation okay so let's first try to create one page one simple page okay so for that i'll open this adfc config.xml adfc config.xml uh, is a file which is created by adf uh, when you create an application i have not created this file once you open this <coughs> this says that this is an unbounded task flow okay so basically uh, Task flow are of two types. One is unbounded, one is bounded. I'll explain it to you that what a task flow is, but I'm not going to go deep inside to explain you right now what an unbounded task flow is and what a bounded task flow is. Uh, we'll cover that in uh, later tutorials. Okay. So this is basically a task flow. Now the question is, what is a task flow? A task flow is basically some set of uh, activities which uh, constitute uh, a navigation. As an example, if you go to Flipkart or e-commerce website or you order something, so there is a particular set of navigation that you have to follow. You have to select your item and put it into your cart. Then uh, you know you have to check out and then you have to provide address, your address details. And again, uh, you click next button. You go and chase the, choose the payment mode. And after that, again uh, you click on finish. So there is a particular set of navigation that Flipkart uh, makes their user to follow in order to uh, uh, order something right so that particular set of navigation we call it here as task flow okay so inside a task flow what could be there there could be pages right i mean there could be page one there could be page two and then user comes in uh, visits page one and clicks something on page one which navigates the user to page two right something like that so we are going to design that navigation here right now but uh, before designing that whole navigation we are going to design a page here okay so design, to design a page, you see this is ADF, uh, ADFC config XML uh, unbounded task flow. So inside a task flow, you have to create a page. I mean, you have to create a page inside a task flow. Okay. So now there is this component palette which lists various components. You can scroll through and see those all uh, components here, right? So this component palette will always uh, provide you a list of component which can be dragged on. To the left hand side see here also it is written drag content into this blank diagram from the component palette right so it says uh, so if you have to design a page you can see this view uh, component here right so you have to basically drag this view component here and it would uh, make a page so if i drag this here see uh, it uh, it uh, actually has created a pro prototype of the page so let's name this as home page okay so i have named it as home page right now it is a prototype the page is not created to create the page you have to double click it and once you double click it this wizard comes in which says that this is the name of the page this is the directory where i'm going to store it leave these as defaults and this is the blank page not based on any uh, page template so let's not uh, choose any complex option right here to go via some template or something we'll choose uh, to choose uh, to have a blank page right now. Okay, this is the name of the page, this is the blank. 
click OK. Now it will start creating your page. You see here, this page has been created and is being opened by ADA, right? <clears throat> so now this page is created. Now let's put some components, some, something inside it. Let's say that uh, once this page is launched, we should show that this is a home page. Okay. So we need to put some UI component over it, right? So again, we'll take the help of component palette. Component palette is going to list all of the items here, which can be tracked onto the page or onto the left hand side, whatever you have on the left hand side. Okay. So if you scroll through this common components, you will find something called as output text. It is an alphabetical order. See here, output formatted, output level and output text is there. So we'll use output text to display a message which would uh, guide the user that this is a home page. So we have to put this, I mean you, you just have to uh, hold and drag this and then release it here. So you see here output text is being dragged. One more thing, this page you are seeing this is in design mode right now. So whatever you drag over here, uh, it would show you the design uh, which uh, which would uh, how the page is going to look like on the runtime the design it is being uh, shown here and there is this structure window also here which shows you uh, the structure part of it so you see there is this af form and inside this you just have dragged this output text right and it is selected right now so you have to select this output text here or in the structure window if you select in structure window it is going to be selected here if you select here it is going to be selected here also okay so you know right now this is output text we want to have uh, some message like this is a home page right so just click on this and if you click on this there will be something called as property inspector this box is a property inspector i'll explain this see property inspector and whatever you choose on the page it will start showing the properties of those components okay if there was some other component like a button or a link and if you have selected that this property inspector would show uh, the properties of the selected that link uh, or, or the button which you selected okay the properties of uh, the selected element so right now you have selected this output text and hence it is showing the properties of this output text and you see this value is output text button that is why it is uh, showing you this text now we will have a value this is a home page okay so now by this what we are seeing uh, you see here also it gets refreshed it says this is a home page so whatever you have to do with this output text component you can do with this property inspector I mean any UI component that you drag from here to the page and then select it and then suppose the, that UI component can be button, can be a link, can be output text, can be input text, can be anything, right? can be checkbox, select radio button, can be anything. So once you select that UI component on the page, its properties are shown and then you can modify it like you can uh, alter its size or look and feel your know, that style, how it is going to appear, everything you can change in the home page. So right now we renamed it as uh, this is a home page. I mean, we 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 are using output text which shows this our home page. But this text is pretty much small. Let's make this big. So how we are going to do this? Simply selecting it and uh, seeing its property, and we are going going to search for some property which uh, says something like size. So here you see there's a size, and if you select a uh, large size, let's say select large. So as you selected large this large size uh, came in here right uh, let's save all the changes this save all I click on it and it saves all the changes and now I go to ADF this uh, task flow and here you this page is completely designed now now let's run this page to test whether this is working fine I mean this page uh, is working fine or not and showing this content so if I go, go on this and right click and say run this is run or debug you can choose any one of them let's say run okay so it's gonna run this and launch the page it's gonna take a while so you can see that it has automatically launched the page and it is launching and you see this is a home page so our page design is working very well so far right so let's do one thing i mean we designed one page which is called as home page and we ran it it is working fine let's design one more page and uh, then 
we are going to connect those pages through navigation that is to say uh, what we'll do we will create a button on a home page and if you click on that button it will go on that second page so first part is designing that second page right so again we are going to use component palette and in this view activity i mean many activities are there we'll uh, come to know about the other one as we go down the line but right now we have to create a page and with uh, for a page this view activity is used so just uh, hold it drag it and drop it and name it as detail page okay so now this detail page is there now if you double click it it's gonna again create this detail page go via this option blank page and I'll click ok we are actually doing the same thing which we did for home page the only thing is this is a different page now now it is designing yeah so the page is here now again we are going to put some output text on it so for this component palette see in the component palette output text is there drag it over here and as you drag it just select this okay this is the UI component which you selected and you can see the property on the selection made you can see the property of the UI component which you have selected we selected output text you are seeing the property of that output text now we want to say that display the text that this is a detail page and let's increase the font also I mean increase the size of the font so go to the uh, same property inspector and size will make it as large okay so that is all so now we have designed a second page which is a details page and it is pretty much the same as the home page only only thing is it displays that this is a detail page so let's run this also and see uh, whether it is working fine or not run and it's gonna take a while uh, so so far what we have done we have created a home page we have created a detail page both are same only difference is the text that they display when displays that is a home page and the detail page displays that it is a dis uh, detail page right so let's wait until it uh, launches again i mean you can see yeah it is launching again and details page is being getting rendered and there you go this is a detail page so so far uh, we design these two pages right but there is no interaction i mean once a user comes on this page or this page user can't navigate from one page to the other let's design that navigation okay so you have the pages designed so for designing a navigation first you should have the pages uh, with you so now we already have the pages with us right this is a home page this is a detail page now we need to design a navigation from here to there for that we use control flow case so click on this control flow case and then come over here and drop this arrow like this okay and as you drop it uh, you will have to name this something so you can name anything go to uh, details okay just like that Hit enter. so as you see there is a navigation not defined from home page to details space so, so far we created these two pages and defined a navigation and this navigation uh, action is uh, go to details okay this is the uh, action name this is action Okay. now the only thing is but on home page there is no button right which should navigate us to the details page so let's go on home page and create a button go on home page and after this message hit enter okay and now we have to drag a button over here now you can search again i mean this component palette whatever you have to design you have to take the help of this component palette now again for button we need to search so you see button is there now one way is to scroll through all of these uh, result and to find out uh, the concern component which you want to use oh, i drag this component uh, mistakenly I'll, this is a calendar i will just delete it okay. so now we have to create a button so you write a button here and hit enter it is automatically going to search for the matching uh, elements so out of this this is this is the button which you want to use drag this over here so now there is this button created but this says uh, command button one which doesn't uh, has a meaningful uh, job to show to user right so let's uh, let's uh, just uh, rename this uh, the text which uh, button is showing so for that you select this button and as i told earlier that you modify you if you want to modify anything related to this ui component you have to select this and go to its property inspector in the property inspector you can see text so over here you can say go to details page right so this is how we have designed uh, and you see here also it gets updated 
So now your home page looks like this. It has a button inside this. On the click of it, you should be taken to the details page via this navigation. But hold on. This is a navigation which is like go to details, but we have not linked this navigation to this uh, button. I mean, AD, we should tell ADF that on the click of this, uh, they can be many buttons over this page, right? But we have to tell ADF that on the click of this particular button, you have to follow this navigation. So what we need to do, we need to select this button. I mean, we need to tell ADF something about this button, right? So we need to select this button and in the property inspector, there will be something called as action. In the action drop down, if you see the navigation which you defined is present over here. So you select this go to details. So this go to details is the same navigation here which we have already defined. So now what we have done, we have created a button and uh, placed a text go to details page on, on it via property inspector. And then from the action uh, property, we have linked that navigation. So basically in the action, all of them, those navigations which you have defined uh, here between the pages will come. So you just have to select the appropriate uh, action. Now we have linked this navigation to this button. Now if we run this home page, uh, we should get this button and on the click of it, it should generate this go to details action. And as a go to details action is generated, ADF will say that this is the go to action, go to details uh, action and I should navigate now to the details page. Right? So let's run uh, again uh, this home page, right click. Uh, and let's see what it uh, what it uh, presents, uh, presents us. So it's gonna take a while. I mean, <coughs> server is gonna take a while to launch the page. So as you see, it's just uh, about to launch the page right, if by application. And it launched the page. Let's see what comes on the page. So there you go. This is home page, and this is the button which we put on home page. And we have, you know, our link the navigation with this button. So if you click this, we are taken to the details page, right? Now, after you come to the details page, uh, you cannot navigate back to the home page. I mean, if, if there was a button here, just like uh, the one we had on the home page, uh, if you have a button here and on the click of it, we can be taken to the home page. So let's design that uh, navigation also. So our use case is that we we should have a button on the details page. We should navigate us back to the home page. We have already forward navigation we have. Now we want to define a backward navigation. So to define a navigation again, we'll take the help of control focus. First, you have to define a navigation. So just select this control focus and drop arrow, drop a backward arrow like this and name it as go to, you can name it anything you want, go to home, okay? So you see there is a forward navigation and this forward navigation is already linked to that button of the home page. And now we have created this backward navigation, which is go to home, which is right now not linked to anything. On details page now our job is to create a button and link that backward navigation right so we go to the details page and over here we search for button on the component palette and drop it drag and drop and same way here it says a uh, command I mean you select this its properties are going to come um, let's put the text as go to home page right and uh, so far we have a details page and we put a button but on the click of this button we have not linked any navigation so to link navigation you have to select this and the property inspector it is already selected so properties are already being shown in the property inspector action you can link go to home right so now go to home navigation which is here is linked to this button so now we have both forward and backward navigations. So I save all the changes. Okay. It is uh, saving all of the changes. And now I will run this home page. Let's run this. So you see the page, um, it has launched the page. And 
we are on the home page and there is this go to details page and if i click on this you know that uh, from this is a home page and this is render over here and this button on the click of this button we are going to follow this navigation go to details and we are going to arrive on the details page so let's click this go to details page and here you see we are on details page now now we are on this page details page and over here we designed a button which is a go to home page button and on the click of this button we should follow this navigation on go to home and come back to the home page so if you click on go to home page you see this home page is back so there is a forward and a backward navigation defined now again go to details page we are on details again go to home page again we are so on the home page so we have defined this uh, forward and uh, backward navigation here so this was all about the demo which i wanted to show you uh, this is a small application which he created and under that we have defined two pages and we have uh, defined forward and backward navigation now there can be many other things i mean there are a lot of uh, other activities or uh, elements on component palette and other properties are also there which uh, we can learn down the line if we had uh, the further sessions so basically as uh, as you can see the creation of the page is really very easy and adf is a adf is a framework which actually uh, lets you to do very fast development and development is really rapid and a lot of boilerplate code which you have to write uh, ADF already takes care of that and uh, you don't have to write uh, much code you, you, you can uh, mostly drag and drop and it's not like that programming is not there and Java classes are not there it, it is there inside this but uh, you know in this small demo we have not covered that part Java classes are also there and inside that uh, uh, you know we can play around and tweak around the things there are many functionalities almost uh, anything that uh, you can think in the web app like right, right, any any web application that you can think of uh, be it e-commerce or be it ERP anything can be uh, designed using ADF uh, framework so this was all about the demo uh, thank you very much I'll uh, stop the recording now thanks